concept of demand and supply in economics demand is a utility for a good or service of an economic agent relative to his or her income demand is a buyer's willingness and ability to pay a price for a specific quantity of a good or service demand refers to how much quantity of a product or service is desired by buyers at various prices the quantity demanded is the amount of a product people are willing to buy at a certain price the relationship between price and quantity demanded is known as demand the term demand signifies the ability or the willingness to buy a particular commodity at a given point of time economists record demand on a demand schedule and plot it on a graph as a demand curve that is usually downward sloping the downward slope reflects the negative or inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded as price decreases quantity demanded increases and vice versa changing market price would move the equilibrium point for quantity demanded up and down along the demand curve but would not shift the demand curve and would not change the demand for the good an actual change in demand means that the whole curve of the quantity demanded versus price has shifted this curve is called the demand curve change in demand and not just quantity demanded could come from changes in consumer wealth from consumer preferences or from the prices of substitutes or complements for the product in principle each consumer has a demand curve for any product that he or she is willing and able to buy and the consumer's demand curve is equal to the marginal utility or the benefit curve assuming full information and lack of frictions that would perturb the consumer's choice when the demand curves of all consumers are added up the result is the market demand curve for that product which also indicates a negative or inverse relationship between the price and the quantity demanded if there are no externalities the market demand curve is also equal to the social utility or the benefit curve let us now see the factors affecting elasticity of demand innumerable factors and circumstances could affect a buyer's willingness or ability to buy a good some of the following common factors are the goods price the basic demand relationship is between the potential prices of a good and the quantities that would be purchased at those prices generally the relationship is negative meaning that an increase in price will induce a decrease in the quantity demanded this negative relationship is embodied in the downward slope of the consumer demand curve if the price of a new book is high a person might decide to borrow the book from the public library rather than to buy it the next factor is the price of related goods the principal related goods are complements and substitutes a complement is a good that is used with the primary good for example pen and ink printer and cartridge automobiles and gasoline perfect complement goods behave as a single good if the price of a complement good goes up the quantity demanded for the other good goes down the other main category of related goods are substitutes substitutes are goods that can be used in place of the primary good if the price of the substitute goes down the demand for the good in question goes down the next factor is personal disposable income in most cases the more disposable income that is income after tax and receipt of benefits it is more likely that a person is going to buy more goods the next factor is tastes or preferences the greater the desire to own a good the more likely one is likely to buy the good 
there is a basic distinction between desire and demand desire is a measure of the willingness to buy a good based on its intrinsic qualities demand is the willingness and ability to put one desires into effect it is assumed that tastes and preferences are relatively constant the next factor is consumer expectations about future prices and income if a consumer believes that the price of the good will be higher in the future he or she is more likely to purchase the good now if the consumer expects that his or her income will be higher in the future the consumer may buy the good now the next factor is population if the population grows this means that the demand will also increase and the next factor is nature of the good if the good is a basic commodity it will lead to a higher demand let us now look in detail about the demand curve demand curve is a graphical representation showing different quantities of a good a consumer is willing to buy at different prices assuming no change in other factors influencing demand is called a demand curve of that consumer the negative slope of the demand curve is due to the diminishing marginal utility and the substitution and income effect as the price falls the number of units that is the product where marginal utility which is the benefit outweigh the marginal cost increases thus it will continue to be a rational consumption for a large number of units the substitute effect is apparent because consumers will automatically switch to cheaper goods and move away from higher priced goods due to limited income and the desire to maximize their utility when a goods price changes a consumer's real income will be affected in the case of a price decrease they have greater purchasing power and their real income has increased with this extra purchasing power they are able to buy more let us now study what is priced elasticity of demand which in short is called as ped price elasticity of demand is a measure of the sensitivity of the quantity variable q to changes in the price variable p elasticity answers the question of the percent by which the quantity demanded will change relative to a given percentage change in the price determinants of ped the factors in determining ped is the willingness and the ability of consumers after a price changes to postpone immediate consumption decisions concerning the good and to search for substitutes let us now look at the different types of goods demand the first is the negative demand if the market response to a product is negative it shows that people are not aware of the features of the services and the benefits offered under such circumstances the marketing unit of a service firm has to understand the psyche of the potential buyers and find out the prime reason for the rejection of the service or the good a strategy needs to be designed to transform the negative demand into a positive demand the next type of demand is no demand if people are unaware have insufficient information about a service or due to the consumer's indifference this type of demand situation could occur the marketing unit of the firm should focus on promotional campaigns and communicating reasons for potential consumers to use the firm's services service differentiation is one of the popular strategies used to compete in a no demand situation in the market the next type of demand is latent demand at any given time it is impossible to have a set of services that offer total satisfaction to all the needs and wants of society in the market there exists a gap between desirables and what is available there is always a search on for a better and newer offers to fill the gap between desirability and availability 
latent demand is a phenomenon of any economy at a given time it should be looked upon as a business opportunity by service firms and they should orient themselves to identify and exploit such opportunities at the right time for example a passenger traveling in an ordinary bus dreams of traveling in a luxury bus therefore latent demand is nothing but the gap between desirability and availability the next type of demand is seasonal demand some services do not have an all year round demand they might be required only at a certain period of time seasons all over the world are very diverse seasonal demands create many problems to service organizations such as idling the capacity fixed cost and excess expenditure on marketing and promotions strategies used by firms to overcome this hurdle are like to nurture the service consumption habit of customers so as to make the demand unseasonal or other than the firms recognize markets elsewhere in the world during the off season period hence this presents an opportunity to target different markets with the appropriate season in different parts of the world an example for seasonal demand could be the demand for seasonal fruits in a country demand patterns need to be studied in different segments of the market service organizations need to constantly study changing demands related to their service offerings over various time periods they have to develop a system to chart these demand fluctuations which helps them in predicting the demand cycles demands do fluctuate randomly therefore they should be followed on a daily weekly or a monthly basis let us now study the concept of supply in economics supply refers to the amount of a product that producers and firms are willing to sell at a given price when all other factors being held constant usually supply is plotted as a supply curve showing the relationship of the price to the amount of product businesses are willing to sell innumerable factors and circumstances could affect a seller's willingness or ability to produce and sell a good some of the common factors are the first is the goods price the basic supply relationship is between the price of a good and the quantity supplied although there is no law of supply generally the relationship is positive meaning that an increase in price will induce an increase in the quantity supplied prices of related goods for purposes of supply analysis related goods refer to the goods from which inputs are derived to be used in the production of the primary good for example a silk sari is made of silk threads if the cost of rearing silkworms and producing cocoons increase the cost of a silk sari would also increase a related good may also be a good that can be produced with the firm's existing factors of production for example suppose that a firm produces leather belts and that the firm learns that the leather pouches for smartphones are more profitable than belts the firm might reduce its production of belts and begin production of cell phone pouches based on this information finally a change in the price of a joint product will affect supply the next factor is conditions of production the most significant factor here is the state of technology if there is a technological advancement in one production the supply increases other variables may also affect production conditions for instance for agricultural goods weather is crucial for it may affect the production outputs the next factor is expectations if the seller believes that the demand for his product will sharply increase in the foreseeable future based on market conditions and analysis the firm owner may immediately increase production in anticipation of future price increases the supply curve would shift out the next factor is price of inputs 
inputs include land, labor, energy and raw materials. If the price of inputs increase, the supply curve will shift left as sellers are less willing or able to sell goods at any given price. For example, if the price of electricity increased, a seller may reduce his supply of his product because the increased cost of production. The next factor is the number of suppliers. The market supply curve is the horizontal summation of the individual supply curves. As more firms enter the industry, the market supply will shift out, driving down prices. The next factor is government policies and regulations. Government intervention can have a significant effect on supply. Government intervention can take many forms including environmental and health regulations, hours and wage laws, taxes, electrical and natural gas rates, and zoning and land use regulations. Let us now look at the supply curve. The relationship of price and supply curve. The curve is generally positively sloped. The curve depicts the relationship between two variables only, that is price and the quantity supplied. All other factors affecting supply are held constant. However, these factors are a part of the supply equation and are implicitly present in the constant term. Movements versus shifts. Movements along the curve occur only if there is a change in the quantity supplied caused by the change in the goods own price. A shift in the supply curve is referred to as change in supply occurs only if a non-price determinant of supply changes. For example, if the price of an ingredient used to produce the good, a related good, were to increase, the supply curve would shift left. Elasticity The price elasticity of supply, which in short is known as the PES, measures the responsiveness of quantity supplied to changes in price as the percentage change in quality supplied induced by 1% change in price. Since supply is usually increasing in price, the price elasticity of supply is usually positive. Significant determinants of PES includes number 1. Complexity of production Much depends on the complexity of production process. Textile production is relatively simple. The labor is largely unskilled and the production facilities are little more than buildings. No special structures are needed. Thus, the price elasticity of supply for textiles is elastic. On the other hand, the price elasticity of supply for specific types of motor vehicles is relatively inelastic. Auto manufacturing is a multi-stage process that requires specialized equipment, skilled labor, a large supplier's network and a large research and development cost. The next factor is time to respond. The more time a producer has to respond to price changes, the more elastic is the supply. For example, a cotton farmer cannot immediately respond to an increase in the price of tomatoes and start growing tomatoes. The next factor is excess capacity. A producer who has unused capacity can quickly respond to the price changes in his market assuming the variable factors are readily available. The next factor is inventories. The producer who has a supply of goods or available storage capacity can quickly respond to price changes. Let us now look at market structure and the supply curve. There is no such thing as monopoly supply curve. Perfect competition is the only market structure for which a supply function can be derived. In a perfectly competitive market, the price is given by the marketplace from the point of view of the supplier. A manager of a competitive firm can state what quantity of goods will be supplied for any price by simply referring to the firm's marginal cost curve. 
to generate his supply function the seller would simply initially hypothetically set the price equal to 0 and then incrementally increase the price at each price he would calculate the hypothetical quantity supplied using the marginal cost curve following this process the manager could trace out the complete supply function a monopolist cannot replicate this process because price is not imposed by the marketplace and hence is not an independent variable from the point of view of the firm instead the firm simultaneously chooses both the price and the quantity subject to the stipulation that together they form a point on the customer's demand curve a change in demand can result in changes in price with no changes in output changes in output with no changes in price or both there is simply not a one to one relationship between price and quantity supplied there is no single function that relates price to quantity supplied in microeconomics supply and demand is an economic model of price determination in a market it concludes that in a competitive market the unit price for a particular good will vary until it sells at a point where the quantity demanded by customers at the current price will equal the quantity supplied by producers at the current price resulting in an economic equilibrium for price and quantity the four basic laws of supply and demand are number 1 if demand increases and supply remains unchanged a shortage occurs leading to a higher equilibrium prices number 2 if demand decreases and supply remains unchanged a surplus occurs leading to a lower equilibrium price number 3 if demand remains unchanged and supply increases a surplus occurs leading to a lower equilibrium price and number 4 if demand remains unchanged and supply decreases a shortage occurs leading to a higher equilibrium price what is equilibrium equilibrium is defined to be the price quantity pair where the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied represented by the intersection of the demand and the supply curves market equilibrium this is a situation in a market where the price is such that the quantity that consumers demand is correctly balanced by the quantity the firms wish to supply comparative static analysis this examines the likely effect on the equilibrium of a change in the external conditions affecting the market changes in market equilibrium practical use of supply and demand analysis often center on the different variables that change the equilibrium price and quality represented as shifts in the respective curves comparative statics of such a shift traces the effects from the initial equilibrium to the new equilibrium macroeconomic uses of demand and supply demand and supply have also been generalized to explain macroeconomic variables in a market economy including the quantity of total output and the general price level the aggregate demand aggregate supply model may be the most direct application of supply and demand to macroeconomics but other macroeconomic models also use supply and demand demand and supply are also used in macroeconomic theory to relate money supply and money demand to interest rates and to relate labor supply and labor demand to wage rates with this we come to the end of the concept of demand and supply thank you